well we've hit the end of the chapter and we've just got some tidying up to do so this video will just be about tidying up some 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 points you'll recall that <clears throat> throughout the chapter I kept referring to the carry that uh, that you carry the asset to the end of the term well now let's be explicit about what the carry is and we'll we'll denote um, e to the power of ct where c is the cost of carry and I had uh, made a point of referring to that uh, portion of the power term earlier uh, we've seen it to the power of r t we're just going to drop the t the t stands alone so to the power of r if there is no income r minus q or r minus q plus u is a known yield or a known yield plus storage that's uh, like the gold lease r minus rf is the carry for a currency the domestic short-term interest rate minus the foreign short-term interest rate r plus u is the carry for a commodity that pays no income uh, but has storage costs so it's no income plus net, net storage costs so it is the power term in the uh, uh, in the e term it's part of the power term that doesn't include the t <clears throat> everything else is the cost of carry that's all that is so uh, I was referring to carry you, know, you have to carry it to the end of the term and whatever our, our carry is whatever our power term is that ends up being the cost to carry an asset to the end of the term so just to uh, uh, put some vocabulary to that and some meaning to that well let's use the cost of carry uh, to talk about uh, uh, delivery um, with a forward contract there is a date of delivery we know what the date is it's written into the forward contract futures on the other hand are known for having delivery periods so it's over a period of time so if we're calculating the futures price the question then comes up is well what day do I use <clears throat> as the delivery date the beginning when it starts delivery or at the very end and you'll recall it's the short position that determines when to deliver so we have to look at a contract and say well when would it be in the shorts interest the short positions best interest to deliver and it all has to do with the cost of carry versus the opportunity cost of the funds so you recall that y was our convenience yield so if the cost of carry minus the convenient yield is positive in other words it costs us money to carry it now you would have an upward sloping futures curve in other words further dated futures contracts would have a higher futures price than near dated futures contracts you'd result in an upward sloping futures curve as we went out one month two months three months four months etc so because there's a positive cost to carry the short side is motivated to deliver as soon as possible so when we have an upward sloping uh, futures curve typically T would be the date set as of the beginning of the delivery period because this per this position would say look it costs me every day to carry it I want to deliver it as soon as I possibly can I'm gonna deliver it so we get the motivation there that's fine well what if we have a downward sloping futures curve and we do get that in our next uh, uh, slide we'll talk about that but what it implies is that the cost of carry minus the convenience yield is less than zero. Hence, it's, it's often better to hang on to it than it is to deliver it. Uh, in this case, the short side would want to deliver as late as possible. As late as possible. So we would set T at the end of the delivery period. So when you're pricing out futures contracts, depending on the shape of the futures curve, you will use either T set at the beginning or T set at the end to get a, a crisper uh, 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 estimate of the futures price when you are calculating it on the date. Now, on a date that you calculate the futures price, you may observe an upward sloping futures curve, but there's nothing saying it has to stay that way. It may, over as time passes, it may over the course of time, be upward sloping to begin with and then maybe it flattens out and maybe it starts to uh, show some downward sloping at which case the futures price would begin as we get closer to t the futures price would begin to adjust from the end of period to the beginning of the period so keep in mind that the futures price can adjust depending on the shape of that futures curve okay and we'll uh, be ending with a discussion and a distinction between the futures price 
versus the expected future spot price. Let me say that again. The futures price versus the expected future spot price. So let me give you an example of something that, uh, that I, a trade that I entered into. July 2015, I observed that the December contract on live cattle was trading at 154. So the December futures price was 154, and this futures price was based on nothing more. How we achieve this futures price, this is not an expectation of what we think the spot price will be. This futures price is nothing more than the spot price of the cattle, plus whatever storage costs, because you got to put live cattle somewhere before you sell them, right? Plus the storage costs carried to the end of the term. That's all that is. And the delivery date was December 2015. Well, we know that spot prices and futures prices converge as we get closer to the date of delivery. I just put futures here and spot here. I don't know if that was the relationship. It could have been spot up here and futures here, but I'm just uh, drawing this out to show that we are expecting convergence. So as a trader, when I observe in July a futures price for December of 154, <clears throat> the question I have to ask is, what will be the expected future spot price in December? I know what the future price, the futures price for December delivery is in July, but what will the spot price be? What do I expect the spot price to be in the future? The expected future spot price. Will spot cattle be higher and or lower than 154? If I anticipate that spot cattle would have been higher in December, I never would have shorted at 154. I would have went long. But I expect that by the time we get to December, the, the spot price on cattle will be less than 154 on live cattle. So, and as of, as of uh, the date of, of doing this, spot cattle right now is about 142. So I'm okay for now. <clears throat> Not as much as I thought it would be, but I'm, I'm, I'm in the money, which means I've got some, uh, some breathing room. So let's look at, at two ways of describing uh, markets and we'll bring in the idea of expectation as well. Let's start with what a trader would say. Not what an academic would say, but what a trader would say. The person on the street trading the contract. <clears throat> if we have an upward sloping futures curve, which means that further dated contracts have a higher futures price today than nearer dated futures contracts do, we say this market is in contango. It's an upward sloping futures curve. If we have a downward sloping futures curve, which means longer dated futures prices are lower than nearer dated futures prices, we say this is a market, I'm writing bark, in backwardation. So there's contango and backwardation. That's what would be said on the street, on the trading floors, among professionals, among professional commodity traders. Those two words are, are unmistakable in what they mean. When a futures trader says to another futures trader, the market is in contango, the other futures trader has a mental picture in his head of exactly what that means. May not know the slope of the curve or what the shape of the curve looks like, but knows that it's upward sloping. Excellent. Now let's bring in what an academic means by that. What they're talking about in terms of contango and backwardation is this. If the expected future spot price, so there's ST, that's the, few, that's the spot price at time T. If the expected future spot price is higher than the futures price, right there, if it's higher than the futures price, an academic calls this normal contango normal contango. So a market in contango from a trader's perspective means an upward sloping futures curve. From an academic perspective, a market in normal contango means that the expected future spot price is above the current futures price. So let's look at backwardation here. Well, we can do the same thing right here. There you go. This is normal contango. That's normal contango for an academic. An academic doesn't is not interested in the shape of the curve, just in the destination of the prices. At T, at any given time, do we expect the future spot price 
the future spot price to be higher than the current futures price for that date. And I know that's a lot of future future in there. You got to see it in your head that this is the price we expect to see in the spot market. This is the futures price of the contract as a function of the input variables. If we expect that the spot price will be above it regardless of the shape of the curve, an academic would describe that as normal contango. So we have here a contango, market in contango and in normal contango. Here you have a market in backwardation and normal contango. So let's look at the other side of it. If the academic expects that the future expected spot price will be below the futures price, this is called normal backwardation. And that would apply here as well, normal backwardation. Okay, so you can have a market in contango and in normal contango. You can have a market in contango and normal backwardation. A market in backwardation and normally and, and normal contango. And a market in backwardation and in normal backwardation at the same time. Now I say that uh, um, those who are applying the trade use these terms. Those that study the trade use these terms. Well, what is the big difference between, uh, between the two? Well, contango, we can see at any point in time, uh, we, we can look up the futures prices of, of any uh, commodity. We can plot them uh, and, and get a, a curve uh, for any of them. So we can see them. We can see them. But here's the thing. We cannot see the expected future spot price. It's unobservable. We don't know what it is. So in the market, we don't, we're not going to mess around with a theoretical future price. If, if we can't observe it, we can't, we can't trade something we can't observe. Let me see something that I, can, that, that I can actually see. We can see contango, we can see backwardation, but normal contango and normal backwardation is anybody's guess. When I entered the trade uh, for live cattle in July of 2015, uh, the market, uh, the, the uh, futures curve looked like this. But I still believe that the expected future spot price would be below 154. So in other words, I was expecting a normal backwardation market, but I was trading a market that was, all, that was in contango, but I was expecting normal backwardation. I didn't think that way. No, no professional really thinks that way. They think, well, what will be the normal backwardation or the normal? They'll just look at the futures price and say, well, what do I? Where do I think prices on cattle will be after the slaughter period this fall in December? I think they'll be lower, and that's the bet I made that I think they would be lower, and that's all. I didn't think about well, normal contango, normal. But you do pay attention to the shape of the curve. Now, if the curve had already been in backwardation and the futures price significantly lower, then at that point I would say, well, you know, if the futures price were 134 instead of 154, I wouldn't have made that bet. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have bet that the future uh, expected spot price would be lower than that price at that time. So the shape of the curve helps me decide whether or not the markets got it wrong in terms of future supply. But I don't think theoretically about what the expected price will be. I think practically about what I think it will be, and that's what it'll be. So, at any given time, you have some traders, if we, if we want to think academically, on every futures contract. Listen to me now. What does every futures contract need? Two parties. So on every futures contract, you have one party that's expecting normal contango, regardless of, what, of the shape of the curve, and one party that's expecting normal backwardation. In fact, if you look at the entire futures market, half the people are long, half the people are short, half of them are going to be right, and half of them are going to be wrong. So this is a theoretical statement that has a, the same chance of being right as flipping a coin. I don't like those odds. So contango, backwardation, if you got that, contango is upward sloping, backwardation is downward sloping. If you're going into the real world, into practice, that's all you need. If you're going to be an academic and you're going on to do a PhD, you better pay attention to this theoretical stuff because what the hell do you need the real world if you're going to be a professor for? All you got to do is worry about theory. So...
when we see the word normal in front of contango or backwardation, that means theoretical. Because uh, um, since the expected spot price is unobservable, is unobservable now. And you can't even figure it out. Because what you're saying is that whatever this future's price is, if the market is in normal contango, we expect that the spot price will be higher. Well, how much higher? A lot higher? A little bit higher? Just a tiny little fraction higher to say mathematically it's higher? Or infinitely higher? How much? And the theor theor theoretician would say it doesn't matter what it is. It just matters that, that the relationship holds and that's how we describe it because we need language so we know what we're talking about. I don't know, you can see that I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of, of starting to get into the, uh, well, what if scenarios, because I can see that on every futures contract, one person believes this, the other person believes this. Otherwise, why would, why would they enter in? Why would a short person enter into a contract saying, no, you're right, the price is going up, but I'll take the short side because I'm a nice guy. Not going to happen. Hey, that wraps up chapter five. Thank you. Thank you.